In a span of two days, Hurricane Thelma swept over Costa Rica, leaving more than 25 dead, several injured, and over $50 million worth of property and agricultural damages. Constant heavy rainfall caused rivers to overflow, inundating entire villages with enormous amount of water, rocks, debris, and mud. However, geologist Lidio Esquivel of the Comisión Nacional de Emergencias, or CNE, disputes that this alone caused the destruction. Hay una primera tendencia siempre a echarle la culpa, si, si es que existe mm -hmm. la posibilidad de echarle la culpa a que, a que la naturaleza, mm -hmm. a que el evento fue extraordinario, a que la naturaleza fue despiadada, por decirlo de alguna forma, o a que el río se salió mm -hmm. y abordó y, 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 e invadió las casas que estaban al lado. Eh, es clarísimo que eso no es así. 60% of the country, he says, comprises of mountainous territory, which means these areas are not suitable for development. Despite this claim, more and more people still choose to build and face the risk of living in a danger zone. Environment expert Roland Borel agrees that this tragedy was clearly a man-made event. But who will take the responsibility? The event is causing so much destruction uh, is not is not an environmental issue, it's a political issue. It's a, uh, it, it has not to do with, with water, it has to do where people put their houses and where they're allowed to put their houses. Several years ago, a sophisticated urban development and land use program had been developed to delineate areas with different levels of risk and identify where people are allowed and prohibited to build. These plans have cost millions of dollars and they have come up with fantastic maps and, and, and all sort of studies. Uh, but they have been completely disregarded uh, by every government. CNE says this information was not made available to all local municipalities. Aside from this, local governments can only do so much but issue a warning to the people about the risk when they insist on building their homes. So the, the the laws and regulations in Costa Rica are not really strong in that aspect, that they can force people to live here or not live here. Some people have to do this out of necessity, and other people do it because they have the money to do it, and they don't care if they get fined. The lack of political interest, Borrell says, comes to play as well. These are not the types of measures that bring in votes, because the reactive mechanism you can see uh, a truck coming by, you can see action happening and, uh, you know, you are even getting the dead out of the mud and, you know, this is something, ah, the government is doing something. Prevention is not seen. But for an emerging country like Costa Rica, it is not easy to allocate their national budget on prevention and disaster risk reduction programs. Education, public health and economic development are amongst the main priorities of its government. El país no puede dejar de invertir en salud y en educación para empezar a invertir en desastres, porque tampoco es que el dinero está disponible. O sea, no es que el país tiene los recursos económicos para enfrentar eso, es que cada desastre nos empobrece un poco más. Ciudad Colón Mayor Gilberto Monge, for instance, has made several requests for the past five years to the national government to acquire geological instruments that would detect soil movement, specifically for the dangerous roads of El Rodeo, where road mudslides have become part of the lives of its residents. So you can say that the but national government has always been ignoring your requests despite all the disasters? Yeah, I think so. The, the National uh, Emergency Committee is not... Uh, the most uh, Reliable. efficient. Uh. Perhaps the landslide tragedy would serve as a grim reminder, memorable enough to push the national government to invest time and budget to take on preventive measures and encourage responsible urban planning for the safety of its people. But how soon can they act? Sadly, in here, tragedies are easily forgotten. With the upcoming municipal elections next month, will the voters find the candidates who will make the change and prioritize human lives over urban development? Or will they let this tragedy become another distant memory and be forgotten like the houses under the mud? Only time can tell.